everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'll be making this small Art Deco scallop sun catcher. Um, small pieces like this are great for using up some scrap pieces that you have. And I have this pattern available on my Etsy. I'll put the link in the description box. Um, you can purchase the pattern if you'd like to make it at home. So I pulled out some different purples that I have. I might not use them all, but I might. Um, so these two are Spectrum. Um, this is, I don't know what this texture is. I have so much of this type of glass though. I think it's really fun and it really lets the light sparkle off of it. I've got some purple Spectrum water glass. And then this is that same wispy purple spectrum, except it's iridized. So this is what I will be working with. I just want to talk about the pattern for a quick second. When I cut out my pattern, um, I either use foil shears, which will cut out this black line for me. Otherwise, if the shape is too difficult to cut out with the foil shears, because they're kind of bulky and hard to maneuver, um, I just make sure to cut out the black pattern line. That way, once I trace my pattern onto my glass and I cut it and I grind off the paint line, everything should fit nicely and there should only be, if needed, just a tiny bit of extra grinding to make everything fit perfectly. But for the most part, um, everything should fit together really nicely. Because if you just cut out the pattern <clears throat> without trimming the pattern line, then you're going to have, once you foil, it's the whole piece is going to expand and then everything's not going to fit nicely together. So when you're cutting <clears throat> small pieces on the waffle grid, you want to be careful to, so I don't want to cut this piece in the middle of a waffle square because it'll just fall into the hole. And you want to be careful when you're applying pressure on the piece, not to do it over an open square. You want to apply the pressure on the grid because if you apply pressure on the open hole, you could crack your piece. Okay, so one other way you can cut a curve, because we all know there are many ways to do the same thing, is you can score the whole curve 
curve first. And then go in and make all of your little scores. So I made all of my scores. And then we go in. So you can also do it that way. See now this one is really thin. So if I held my piece right here as I scored, I could potentially crack it right there. So I want to make sure I hold it where it's braced underneath or supported. It took me a little it to get used to this waffle grid, but I've been using it so long that once you get used to it, it's just so nice. I grind my pieces then I lay them out on the pattern which I put inside one of these plastic photo sleeves so it doesn't get ruined with moisture. Um, I lay out my pieces on the pattern and see if I need to do any more grinding. Okay, so there are definitely some spots that need help, like up here, these two need a little more work, and then, but easy peasy. Okay, so now everything fits very well together. Now I go through and clean each piece off with some alcohol. That'll get all of the oil paint marker off and any dust or any other oils. So for this piece, all of the pieces are either super dark or you really can't see through them at all. So I can use copper backed foil for all of the pieces. And I will be using 3 16 because all of my pieces are so little, I want really delicate solder lines. And then I will be doing a black patina on this piece. I actually, black patina is my favorite. I think you cannot go wrong with a black patina. Every piece is going to look great with a black patina. Um, sometimes copper works really well and sometimes silver works really well, but black will always work, in my opinion.
Look how pretty this glass is. Uh, I love it so much. Okay, so I'm getting ready to solder. Um, because I use such thin foil and a lot of my pieces are really small and delicate, I like to use an eighth inch wide soldering tip. I just feel like I have more control so I'm not left with um, any big blobs, especially in these really tight areas here. And I will have my fume extractor on and I will be wearing this vapor mask and I will be using the classic 100 gel flux. I really like this flux. Um, I, don't, I don't, I use a lot of different fluxes. I use this one. I also really like the glass star flux and I did get some paste flux to try out. I haven't tried it yet, but I have, well, I did try paste flux once in the past and I hated it, but I want to try it again. So, because I know a lot of people use it and like it. So let's go. Now that I cleaned the flux off with CJ's flux remover, I am going to immediately take a magic eraser sheet, wet it, and rub all the solder lines. Okay, so now I'm just going to apply the black patina and then I will rinse it in water and let it dry for a few hours. Now that my 
my patina is nice and dry. You can see how kind of yucky the patina looks before you wax it. It looks, it does not look pretty. And then you wax it and it's magically beautiful. So I'm going to go ahead and use Mother's Cleaner Wax. It also smells really good. I don't know if that's just me, but I think it smells really good like candy. You can already see how the wax is helping. And I'm gonna let this dry probably overnight and then I'll buff it off in the morning.